Eternal and gracious Lord, I thank you for this day, God. We thank you for being who you are, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are able to make us clean on the inside. We thank you, Lord, that you haven't given up on us. We thank you, Lord, that throughout the heat, God, throughout the humidity, that you allow us to come into an air-conditioned facility. God, we thank you for the many blessings that you bestow upon us, God. We thank you that you haven't given up on us, that you never left us, nor forsaken us. God, we need to hear a word from you today, God. We need to hear a word of encouragement. We need to hear a word of direction and a word of assurance. Now, God, I pray that you may give me articulation of speech and clarity of mind to preach the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. It's in your holy and precious name that we pray and that we believe in Christ. Say amen. 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 Let some of you know this week uh, we're going to be starting for the next few weeks a sermonic, a sermonic series uh, with the theme Rejuvenated by Spiritual Transformation. Rejuvenated by Spiritual Transformation. Because I believe that during the summer months, oftentimes people tend to get off course with God. They tend to go on vacation with God and praying and hoping that God would never go on vacation with them. And I also believe that oftentimes we have to become rejuvenated and the best way to become rejuvenated is through spiritual transformation. So that's going to be our sermonic thing for the next few weeks and we have the Bible coming from Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew starting at chapter 21 and I just want to look at two verses, verses 21 and 22 and in your quiet moments to get the understanding of full meaning, uh, read 18 through 22, but for our sermonic spotlight this morning, I just want to look at two verses, verse 21 and 22, coming from the New King James Version. It says, So Jesus answered and said to him, But surely I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. You may have a lesson to the reader. For just a few moments with your prayers and thoughts, I want to put a tag in that text and preach the topic. What happens when you believe? What happens when you believe? Can you just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor? Neighbor. Old neighbor. Old neighbor. There's power. There's power. When you believe. When you believe. Find another neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Old neighbor. Old neighbor. There's power. There's power. When you believe. When you believe. What happens when you believe? Can we be honest for a second and say that doubt has a way of robbing us of what God has for us? Let me say that again. Doubt, if it's allowed to creep into our spirit, will rob us of blessings, will steal our joy, will mess up our miracles because we have allowed doubt to creep in. We all talk about having faith doing great things. We talk about having faith on Sunday morning. But all of a sudden, when our time comes and we are faced with trouble and we're faced with uncertainty, it seems as though that doubt creeps into our spirit. Has anyone ever experienced doubt in their life when God has told you to do one thing, but for some reason when it didn't go the way you wanted it to go, all of a sudden doubt came and knocked on your door. It's one thing to say you believe in God. It's one thing to profess God's goodness, but it's another thing do what God has told you to do. I know I'm talking to somebody right now because you came into the house and you said, you know what, God, I like I like everything about you, God, but all of a sudden, God, when you call my name, when you ask me to stand up and step out, rather than saying, yes, God, I want to know the blueprint that you have for me. We talked about it earlier. God, I want to know A, B, C, and D, God. And, and in a real sense, if the plans don't go the way I like it to go, God, I'm not going step out on faith, but rather I'm going to give way to doubt. You're not feeling me like I need you to. If we look at the dictionary, doubt simply means having suspect. It's being suspicious. It's having fear. And can we be all honest for a second and say that we have allowed fear to rule our consciousness. We have allowed fear to take up residence in our spirit. And anytime we allow fear and doubt to 
take up residence within us. We will always find ourselves looking up while other people are getting blessed up. Let me go back and say that again. While other people are doing all that God has called them to do. Anytime we allow fear to stand in our way, we will then find ourselves less than questioning God, always asking God, what about me? God, did you forget about me? God, I'm coming to you praying. And God said, yes, I've heard your prayers. I've seen your prayers. I see that you come to church Sunday after Sunday. I know that you read the Bible. But one thing that you're failing to do, you're failing to have faith. You're failing to believe me at his word. Do you know anybody like that who operates in doubt, who doesn't want to step out on faith? And I'm here to let you know, whenever you operate on doubt, you will always find yourself being left behind you will always find yourself looking up but I'm here to let you know that what when there's power and believe you're not feeling me like I need you to let me help you out let me take you back to some years James you really won't understand this this was before you was born actually this was before I was born let me make it plain and clear Muhammad Ali you know the greatest Muhammad Ali float like a butterfly sting like a bee can't nobody do it like Muhammad Ali what well, you do realize before he became Muhammad Ali he was Cassius Clay and when he was Cassius Clay he was going up against Sonny Liston he was going up against the big ball of mob tie, the crime ridden Sonny Liston, the one who they said, cash is clay. You can't beat, um, you cannot beat Sonny Liston. And I was researching this and I looked at Ali and uh, my fault, cash is clay. Let me make it right, Dad. Yeah, cash is clay. They told him he's going to knock y'all, not the first round. He may knock y'all the second round, but they say cash is you don't even really need to get into the ring with this man. In the real sense, many people are scared of Sonny listening. Here you are, 22 years old from New from Louisville, running your mouth, talking that you're gonna knock this man out. Isn't that something commentators and sport analysts all over the world are creating doubt, trying to tell Cassius Clay what he can't do? Isn't that something? Can I hang out there for a second? When you're told what you can do, you always got people around you telling you what you can't do, what you can't become. Why they're looking at your color, they're looking at your age, and they may be looking at your education, they're, they're looking at anything and everything, but rather they're not looking at the God in you. But I like what Cash just did. He said, I'm not going to listen to the commentators, I'm not going to listen to these so-called experts, but rather I'm going to step out and get into the ring. You missed that. He said, I'm going to say that I am going to win. As a matter of fact, and not only am I going to win, I'm going to tell the man that I'm going to win. Isn't that something? I'm going, you're going into the enemy's territory and you're telling the enemy what you're going to do, not what you hope to do, not what you might do, but rather what you're going to do. I like that because cash is just operating under the, under the spirit of belief and I'm hoping to help somebody out right now. Whatever you're going through in life, don't second guess it. Whatever God has told you to do, don't be wishy-washy with it. This Say, yes, God, if you told me I'm going to do it, God, I'm going to go ahead and speak those things into existence. I'm going to speak faith into my life. I'm going to speak blessings into my life. I'm going to speak victory into my life. Why? Because only people who doubt, only people who are confused will never get anything, will never receive anything. That's why that there's power when you believe. I like what Cash is played there. You do realize that Cash is now in the ring. He's going against something. Listen, can you imagine? He is a 22 year old Kelly, the one who is really not really experienced, the one who says, You know what? I really don't need to be here according to everybody else. But guess what? He said, I'm going to step out on faith. I'm going to put truth to power. I'm going to let my actions speak louder than my words. I'm going to hang out there for a second because we got a whole lot of people that are good at talking on one end, but their actions fail to stand up and speak out. Do you know anybody like that? They like to talk trash, but they can't put anything up with trash talk. 
because trash talk is all that it is. It's nothing but talking trash. I like that. Let me say that again. See, trash talking, when we flip it around, is nothing but talking trash. It's trash talking that needs to be put in the trash because in the end, we need to see some action. In. And that's what the Bible lets us know here. As we come to our text, we find Jesus talking to his disciples that he had already saw a fig tree, a fig tree that had leaves on it. So Jesus was hungry one day for steam, and he was hungry, so he saw a fig tree with leaves. And, and let us know that Jesus was not only divine, but he was also human. So he went to go get something to eat. He saw a fig tree. Just looking at a fig tree, you ought to go get some figs on it. But he went to the fig tree, and he did not see any figs upon it. Isn't that something? What looked like it had something really didn't have anything at all. And I think we know a whole lot of people, they like to put up a good front with one thing, but as soon as you get close to them, you find out that they're empty, that they are fruitless. What was supposed to be fruitful has now become fruitless. So they find Jesus finds this fig tree that was supposed to have figs on it. And because it has no fig, it did not fulfill its purpose. So Jesus immediately cursed the fig tree and said, you should be buried. You're supposed to be fruitful. And because you're sitting here, you're taking up time, you're taking up space. We're giving you all this time, but you are not fruitful. You are fruitless. And so therefore, Jesus stopped and he cursed the tree. And can I park here and let somebody know the mere fact that you're here today God says I need for you to be fruitful not fruitless in other words don't waste your life doing nothing you were created with the purpose you were created to be all that in the bag and chip or heart don't be fruitless but rather be fruitful and I believe we got too many people in our lives they are fruitless because they're simply trying to find themselves and every time they try to find them Themselves, they lose themselves because rather than identify with God, they try to identify with man. Let me say that again. When you don't understand who you are and whose you are, you allow other people to define you and confine you. And whenever you let people define you and confine you, you will always be subject to who they want you to be. So, so I'm going on with the story. So the disciples heard this and they say, Jesus, the fig tree that you cursed, it already with it. Isn't that something? Jesus spoke it. As soon as he spoke it, it happened. It didn't wait, hesitate, or procrastinate. Why? Because Jesus understood who he was connected to. Y'all missed that. See, he understood that he was connected to God. And he realized, he, I speak for God. And he said, anytime I speak for God, it's going to come to pass. Let me hang out there for a second. See, anytime God tells you to do something, there's no need doubting because Jesus did not doubt. The disciples said, hmm, Jesus, that fig tree withered rather quickly. Jesus said, it was really no concern. He said, all you got to do is have faith and believe. I like that. He said, just have faith and believe. I like that. Let me say, he said, have faith and believe. Don't get borrowed up. Just have faith and believe. See, all you got to do is speak it. And once you speak it and believe it, it's going to come to pass. Have you ever spoke something in your life and you had your audacity to believe it and God somehow, somewhere showed up and showed out in your life? Why? Because you spoke it and you had your audacity to believe it. And then I like what he said. He said, go ahead. He said, you got to have faith. And he said, then I'm going to tell you what you can do. He said, all this mountain, you can say, once you have faith, this mountain, you can cast this mountain into the sea. I like that. He said, you can tell this mountain to be removed if you just have faith. Well, well somebody's looking at me right now and said, well, what type of mountain are you talking about, Rev? I'm talking about the mountain that's trying to bring you down. The mountain is trying to kill your spirit. The mountain is trying to bring, break you out. The mountain is getting on your last nerve. The mountain that's trying to make you feel less than. What mountain am I talking about? I'm talking about the mountains of jealousy, the mountains of anger, the mountains of a messed up 
bad temper. What am I talking about your mountains? The mountains of envy, the mountains of a low self-esteem. What am, mountains am I talking about? The mountains of anything that's got you addicted to anything but God. If you just have faith and believe in God, you can tell any mountain to get the step of why? Because you got God on your side. It's amazing that so many people come to church, they believe that God woke up Jesus on the third day. They believe that God woke up Lazarus, but they don't believe that God can help get any bitty problem. Well, I'm here to let you know that God can handle your little bitty problem because your problem is no match for Almighty God. And so he said, go ahead and tell this mountain to move if you have faith. In. And let me hang up there and see if we got to talk about, we talk about the word faith is belief. I gotta help somebody now because we got too many people walking around saying, I believe in God, but I also believe in the devil. Let me help you. I see the word believe simply means to have faith and confidence in. How can you say I believe in God and believe in the enemy when the word believe means to put trust in, to have confidence in? So how can you have faith and confidence in God? But then flip around so you have faith and confidence in the enemy. Let me help him make the plan. I acknowledge that there's an enemy. But guess what? I don't have faith in the enemy. I believe in God. can never believe in the enemy. Why? Because I never put my faith in anything that goes counter to God. But I like what verse 22 says. He said, all you got to do is ask in prayer. Believe and receive. I like that. We're not naming and claiming. He said, just ask it in prayer. Then you got to believe what you pray for and sit back and get the glory. In other words, don't pray and then doubt. See, we got a whole lot of people praying and doubting, and that's not what happens. See, when you pray to God, you got to believe what you pray for will come to pass, but you got to make sure it's lined up with the Almighty God. Because if it's not lined up with God, you're going to get it what God doesn't want you to have. And I believe all of us have gotten something that God does not want us to have. Okay, quiet, let me help you out. Have you ever received something you said, God, I didn't pray for that. And God said, I gave you what you didn't need to really teach you what you really needed was me. And, and when you really understand what you really needed was me, you will understand that everything that you pray for, it has to line up with my will. And if it doesn't line up with my will, just keep your mouth shut and simply say the word, Lord, let thy will be done. Because if you let the Lord's will be done, you will get God's blessing. But you got to believe him. That's what happens when you believe. Well, you know what? It's a nice day. I'm going to give you three and we out of here. The first thing that the text lets us know is what happens when you believe is that you better understand what you speak out of your mouth will become manifested in the natural. That's right. Mm. Absolutely. Jesus said, don't worry, just have faith. Because Jesus said, I spoke a curse on the fig tree and it happened. And in other words, we've got to be careful what comes out of our mouth. Mm -hmm. Because if we speak so much negative stuff, negative stuff will come out. If we speak good stuff, good stuff will come out. And I, I want to help somebody really. See, whatever you want in life, start speaking the good stuff. Start saying, I'm not just, I'm not just making it day by day. I'm having a good day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Is everything all right? Yes, everything is beautiful. I'm not hurt. I'm not feeling bad. Why? Because I'm gonna use my voice to make what I need to happen happen. If you want success, I double dare you to start speaking success. If you want better, open up your mouth and you declare better. But if you always gonna speak negative, if you always gonna speak harmful, then you can't believe in God. Because God says I'm not a God of doubt, but rather I'm a God of confidence. And so, and so all the time we gotta speak. And our words that we speak are going to come to pass. Well, let me help illustrate this word. You do realize that because Ali, I left you hanging out Ali for that because Ali spoke all those words. Ali was trash talking, but guess what? Rather than trash talking, he was predicting. Let me say that again. See, he just wasn't talking trash. 
he was self prophesied, prophesied what was going to happen. Ooh, y'all missed that. He said, I'm not going to be like everybody else and talk trash. I'm not going to doubt. I'm going to use my mouth to speak confidence of what's going to happen into the ring. While everybody's doubting me, I refuse to doubt me. I'm going to take my faith along with my words, and I'm going to take it into the ring. And you do know what happened, right? The sixth round, Sonny Liston went back to his corner, and Ali stood there in his corner. He started peeking Kimberly. Something's not right over here. He has spit his mouthpiece out. And then Ali ran to the ring in the middle of the ring. And then he started doing the Ali shuffle. And he threw up his hands. Why? Because Ali realized that because he believed, he became champion. Because he believed, he said, I am the greatest. I shook up the world. And that's my word for somebody right now. When you believe in God and you step out on faith, God will give you the victory. And then you can say, I shook up the world. When everyone said no, God said yes. Why? Because I operated on faith. But that's not just my first shout. Here's my second shout. The second shout is that faith will get you over every obstacle. It's just a mountain. What's your mountain? You know what your mountain is, but if you know what your mountain is, I double dare you to put faith on top of your mountain and watch your mountain move. I like that. See, see, all of us got obstacles, but we got to make sure that we operate on faith and not fear. And too many times we allow, like I said, we allow fear to constrict us and to control us. But I serve a God who said, I did not give you a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. I got a God who said, you know what? I love you too much for you to operate in fear. I got a God who said, you know, I woke you up this morning. There was no alarm clock. It was no food that woke you up. God said, I brought you here. God, I serve a God that can say, I can overcome every obstacle in your life. But all you got to do is step out on faith. And when we step out on faith, then we know that God can operate under every single obstacle. I wish I could talk to talk to some people and they say, yeah, you know what, Rev? Yeah, I've had obstacles. I've been sick before, but guess what? When I was in the bed by myself, I didn't count, I didn't count on the doctor. I didn't count on the medicine, but rather, I counted on Almighty God. That got me through my obstacle. Maybe it wasn't you. What about a messed up, jacked up relationship when somebody left you and said, you would never be anything without me. Faith stepped in and said, guess what? No weapon the form that gives me shall prosper. When everybody left you, faith said, you know, I'll never leave you, no forsake you. When faith tried, when people try to get on your nerve, the Lord said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not fear. I shall not want. When any time I'm talking about faith is overcoming every obstacle. So, so whatever obstacle you got, I dare you to speak to it. See, the problem is we don't speak to our obstacles. We, we said, we said, pray for them. Or I, 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 I'm going to just leave all my problems at the altar. But sometimes I come to it, you got to speak to your problem. You got to say problem, and you got to name it, I'm going to leave you at the altar. You don't control me, but rather God controls me. Let me say that again. See, you got to tell your problem, you got to talk to your problem, say problem, you no longer control me, but rather I'm going to control you. Why? Because you didn't make me, you didn't create me, nor did you save me. And guess what? This is the last day, obstacle, that you have a problem over me. And this is the last day that you have power over me. So I'm here to let somebody, what happens when you believe? Guess what? You can have faith to get over your obstacle. But here's my last point, and this is the shout. The last thing you need to understand is that the blessing, the, the, when you believe in God, you will get your reward. Okay. Isn't that what the Bible says, verse 22? He said, if you just simply ask in prayer, mm -hmm. believe, then you're going to receive it. Y'all missed that. Ask in prayer, believe it, and receive it. I like that. In other words, all you have to do is just step out of faith. Believe in God and sit back and allow God to do what only God is able to do. All you got to do is simply 
believe in God, and then God will give you the reward. Let me help illustrate this way. I was preaching at a church a few years ago, and I was talking about Alcoholic Anonymous, and I, I was helping people out, and one young lady came up to me at the end of the service. She said, Rev, she said, thank you for that sermon. I said, well, cool beans, that's all praises to God. She said, no, you don't understand. She said, for nine years, I've been clean. She said, nine years ago, I used to be strung out on alcohol. But she said, I immediately admitted that the alcohol doesn't have a problem or doesn't have power over me. She said, I went to alcoholic and now I did the 12 steps. And she said, that helped me out. But she said, I came to church within those nine years and realized, yes, AA was fine, but God was better. I said, go ahead and testify. And she said, because I believe in God, she said, look at me. Nine years I've been clean. She said, nine years I'm receiving God's reward. Nine years my life was on the straight path. Nine years I don't put my problems in a bottle. Nine years I put my problems to Almighty God. Can I help somebody right now? When you believe in God, you don't have to worry about your problem. All you got to do is turn it over to God. And when you turn it over to God and step out on faith, you can tell every obstacle, every problem, every hater in your life, you can say, peace, don't want to be you. Why? Because I'm believing in God. And when you believe in God, you can start to transform your life spiritually. And I got news for you. When you transform your life spiritually, Get ready for the overflow. Mm -hmm. Y'all miss that. Can I help you with the overflow? Y'all know, y'all know I love coffee, right? Uh, we know if you ever go to like a fancy restaurant, they give you this cup and the sauce. And the good news is they put a sauce in there to catch anything from the overflow, Makala. See, 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 when the waiter comes, he, he pours the cup in tea. But then it's the sauce that's job is to catch the overflow. And, and see, I'm here to let you know, see, when you hook up with the right person, see, God will pour a cup of blessings into your life. Or, or you hook up with the right person, let me back up a second, when you hook up with the right person, God will pour a cup of blessings into somebody that you just hanging with them. Guess what happens? You get the overflow. Y'all miss that. See, see, if you hook up with the right people, if you hook up with believers, if you hook up with people who walk on faith, you really ain't got to say much at all. Just hang with them and you will be the sauce. So when God pours into their life, all you do is just catching the overflow. Well, what is the overflow? It's blessings, it's happiness, it's peace, it's wisdom. Why? Because you're just catching the overflow by hooking up with somebody who's a believer. Yes. Can we look to the Lord and pray?